you can totally see playing in the Nuno Emery system. I am seeing a mid-table big man, big man striker, shirt tucked in, banging in goals. This is what I want. This is what I want from England's top flight. Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, season's not over yet and the transfer rumour mill season is in full flow. How you doing, mate? I'm very well, mate. I'm very well indeed. Um, what a time. Right? What a time. It's, you know, we're confirmed in the Champions League. We're starting to see those exciting transfer rumours come to life. And I personally had a great day today because I bought... Um, 442 always do like a big tournament preview edition for every big tournament. There's like the wall chart, there's like the pull out special preview. You get the map, like, and that I, I buy it every single time there's a major tournament. And I bought it for the Euros, which are less than a month away, by the way. I feel like that's not being spoken about much because we're still in the domestic season, but the Euros are the kickoff on the 14th of June. We're recording this on the 16th of May. So, yeah, less than a month, like three and a half weeks until that kicks off. McGinn will be captain in Scotland, you imagine, in that first game against Germany. They're really not too far away. So, you know, we'll wrap up this weekend, the Premier League. We've then got the European finals that week, building up to the Champions League uh, a week on Saturday. And then it'd be like two weeks until the Euros. It's crazy. Mental, mate. How quick that's going around. John McGinn will be enjoying his one or two weeks off, I'm sure, won't he? Yeah. He, he'll have earned them, mate. He'll have earned them. It's... It's it's great. It's the international football is always great. You guys, you know, we'll probably cover the tournament um somewhat through the the perspective of Villa throughout the summer. But there's still one game left in the Premier League. But I guess we can come to that a little bit later, mate, and talk about the transfer rumor mill, target, player in question. This is an interesting one, mate, because we've there's there's been some sort of high profile names that we've been linked with for a while and you know, we've already spoke about her most so and, you know, if you think back to last summer, there was Asensio as well, who actually, funnily enough, ended up signing for Paris Saint-Germain, which is the club that the player we're about to talk about represents, mate. Carlos Soler, very interesting. This one's come straight from Le Keep, so, you know, reasonably reliable, massive outlet in France, obviously. Notoriously tough on their player ratings. Um, and apparently, according to Le Keep, negotiations have been ongoing for a few months and, and, and talks have been progressing pretty nicely. I find this, this is fascinating, mate, because Soler is probably the profile of midfielder that I wouldn't have thought we needed to address straight away, but is definitely, you know, somebody, who, uh, an attacking midfielder, somebody who likes to get forwards, very comfortable on the ball. So is is somebody you can totally see playing in a Nuno Emery system. And I mean, you know, this is a player who's valued at around 50 million pounds, 50 million euros, sorry. So this would be, It'd be quite quite a coup, really, if we pull this one off, wouldn't it, mate? I love this. I absolutely love this. And Carlos Soler has, you know, been a big name in football for a very long time. Obviously, broke through at Valencia primarily as a as a winger. Actually, he used to play on the right of midfield. As it has as his career has gone on, he's kind of moved into those central areas, and he kind of. He's used all of those best traits that he learned whilst playing out wide and translated them into the midfield game. He's a very adept runner with the ball. He's great at progressing it. He like arrives very late into the box. He's obviously very technical, good in tight spaces. And he's a really, really exciting profile. And Unai will obviously know him quite well. Well, so they were never at Valencia at the same time together. They spent a lot of time in La Liga together. He was playing for Valencia between 2016 and 2022. Throughout most of that time, Unai was at Sevilla, particularly at the early half of his career when he really broke through. And so it's a player that, you know, Unai, Monchi will be very, very familiar with. And it's a cut price fee, right? It's 17 million. I believe Fabrizio has also weighed in and said that he's confirmed that there is interest from Villa, but said that naturally when there's a fee, of that kind of, you know, that's that's a great deal for any club. There's naturally going to be other clubs involved, and there are. But it's a great profile, 27 years old. So for a central midfielder really coming into his prime, 
many caps for his country. I believe he's played four times, four goals. He won the Copa del Rey in Spain. He's obviously won two league titles in France with the Trophée des Champions and then a host of Unders trophies with Spain as well. So he's been there, done it at the elite stages, obviously just got to a European semi-final in the Champions League with Paris Saint-Germain. So coming off a good, good season. This feels like a cut price fee, mate. It does. You would absolutely take it for that price, mate. Um, I think when you sort of look at, you know, some of the underlying numbers, he's he's averaging about 3.09 touches in the attacking penalty area per night. He puts him within the top four percentile of midfielders doing that. And he's receiving 4.9 progressive passes per 90. Again, really impressive. 85% pass accuracy. Can't scoff at that, especially with the positions that he occupies and the sort of the risk that comes with the passes in those positions as well. I think what's important as well, I think we're going to see, and we already are, you know, we've got quite a quite a strong sort of Spanish Latin contingency at the club. It wouldn't surprise me if that continues to grow because, I mean, obviously Emery speaks perfect English and he's clearly communicating his ideas well, well enough through uh, through that. But it wouldn't surprise me to see more Spanish players, more players who are Spanish speaking, come from a Latin background maybe, because he'll be able to get his ideas through much easier in native tongue. And I think, you know, we've kind of said a few times, you know, in previous chats with Rumors over the years, mate, there's so much value to be had from La Liga. And obviously, I know we're talking about a player from Ligue 1 here, but he spent a lot of time playing in La Liga. And I think that was kind of proven with the sort of the signing of Moreno, wasn't it, mate? That there is value to be found in La Liga, in Ligue 1. And it's about sort of unearthing those gems. And not to say that Carlos Soler is necessarily an unpolished diamond. He's a, he's a name and a player that many people know about. But for the deal, for the fee for the fact that PSG are sort of in this transitional phase as they look to move on from life after Kylian Mbappe, it, it, a lot of boxes are being ticked here, aren't they, mate? I think it's, it's one that is a great move in that it's probably not going to come in and demand a starting spot, but we see in particularly in midfield how we really need a depth at points this season, and I think he really offers that. I do think PSG have really stumbled on a midfield three that they can build around going for the future, and that is Vitinha, Fabio, Marie, Zabor, Zaya, Emery. And I think those three look absolutely amazing. I think particularly Vitinha really shone in that semi final with Borussia Dortmund. I think, to be honest with you, he was probably my best player over the two legs and ended up on the losing side. Had a great tie the round before against Barcelona. I really think there's something there for him. And you know, there's such a great depth of midfielders at that club. You know, you've got Carlos Soler, who came off the bench for their most recent game against Nice. He was on the bench with Danilo Pereira, Manuel Agate. You know, they've got some fantastic midfield players. And it's it's not a surprise, really, that he's kind of looking for a way out. Um, obviously, in that game against Nice, probably worth a shout-out, um, he played against uh, Villa's first confirmed piece of transfer activity this summer, which was the sale of Morgan Sanson. Um, I felt particularly of any Villa podcast made, I thought that was definitely worth a mention on uh, mine and yours. And yeah. so it's it's a it's a very interesting one. I think that midfield three will be at the heart of whatever PSG do next. And I think it's fair to say that Carlos Soler probably doesn't quite fit into the frame. And so I also don't think it's many, much of a surprise in that this came to light literally the day after we secured Champions League football. And it's, you know, the big story from Le Keep was that this had been rolling on for some time. And so it wouldn't surprise me if it was contingent and, and almost dependent on Villa being in the Champions League. And so once that was finalised, then maybe talks really started ramping up and perhaps Carlos Soler wasn't as willing to come if we were in the Europa League or something like that, given that he'll be in Europe's premier competition next season with PSG. So I think there is, it was interesting, the timing of it, which maybe adds another layer of validity there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's totally valid, by the way, as well, for anyone who would sort of scoff at the fact that he may have waited for a better option or to, to be, you know, 100% confirmed with, with Champions League football being secured for us. Same with Hermoso. We know that's been going on for even longer than just since the January. This is a player we spoke about last summer. So it's good to know that conversations are being had. Obviously, the fact that top four is secured helps us get these higher profile players in which ultimately is what we need. And when you're looking at 70 million euros, as you say, mate, to secure Soler, 
and most of those on a free, obviously you're probably looking at hundred grand in wages a week. It it's a really solid start to the window if we can get both of them done and over the line, isn't it, mate? That's this is the experience that that we need to be adding with the Champions League coming up and and the fact that we've got eight games in the mini league to play before hopefully we advance or are inevitably dumped out. You know, destiny will be decided. You know, in a long time, we don't have to worry about that now, but. We're going to need to add quality if we want a chance to advance to the knockout stages of that uh, tournament. But before all of that can be done, mate, we have to talk about the final game of the Premier League season, Crystal Palace away. Final games don't really come much harder than this one, mate. They're unbeaten in their last six games, winning five of those. Huge results against Liverpool, Newcastle, Manchester United, even a fairly... uh, I'd say they're probably deflated at the moment, Wolves, but uh, have have been resurgent at times under Gary O'Neill. Extremely organised side. Uh, and you know, even if you go a game further back before that Liverpool game, they lost 4-2 to Man City and really gave them a bit of a game there, if we're being completely frank. This is going to be really difficult. And I think especially mentally, knowing where the squad is at, um, emotionally... Champions League is secured, yes. These guys are at the very sort of at their wits, really. They've played a lot of football. They're going to be very tired. Uh, I wouldn't accuse them of of not trying at all in this game because that's just ludicrous. But I don't envisage there being the levels that we have seen. Uh, I was going to say in recent games, but the levels haven't really been there, have they? It's, It's going to be a really tough one. While Palace just keep on soaring, man. They just keep getting better and better as each week passes. I know, you, like, everyone's decided, yeah, every neutral's favourite Premier League team right now, Palace. I feel like they have just have such an exciting project. Um, me, personally, like, I, I really like Palace's operation. I kind of have been for a long time. I think they're a club that really, like, I think people have a, a lot of, you know, having a great any quantity of Crystal Palace. I think LA is a great player. Lisa is a great player. I love this jean Belit Mateta redemption arc that we're kind of seeing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Like, this season has been distinctly more Barclays than the last. And I am seeing a mid-table sh- big man, big man striker, shirt tucked in, banging in goals. This is what I want. This is what I want from England's top flight. Give me big, tall, strong number nines, shirt tucked Bang it in goals. That's what I want to see. Hook it to my veins. And so I, I love what they're doing. I really, really do. And I have to say that, yeah, as I saw the celebrations the other night, have you, have you seen that video of John McGitt singing the, the Seville anthem? That yeah. He's drinking his hand. He's singing that song. It's fine. As soon as I saw that video, I was like, yeah, we're losing the weekend. <laughs> that's, that's like, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's the lads had the drinks out. I'm sure they did have too many at the awards ceremony. And so, yeah, we don't have a great record on the last day of the season. Anyway, we have won only one of our 25 season enders on the road in the Premier League. We had to last go back to all the way in 2001-2002 for the last time we won a game away on the last day of the season. That was also in London, though, against Chelsea. Beat them 3-1. Uh, we drawn seven, lost 17 of the other of those games. Um, however, I did find one really interesting nugget. Uh if we do beat Crystal Palace, we would do the double over them for the first time since 1980, 1981. The season after, we won the Champions League. So, I'm not going to... Uh, now, I will leave the listeners to draw their own conclusions from that. But all I'm saying is, if that doesn't make us favourites, I don't know what does. That is phenomenal, mate. That is phenomenal. I feel like... Mate- to go back to Mateta, to circle back... He always seems to have a really good game against us. I remember, was it under Steven Gerrard, him coming on and 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 maybe scoring? I can't, I can't exactly remember, but he's a handful. He's a handful and a very underrated FPL asset. Thirteen goals and four assists this season seems to have really found his feet under Glasner. But I mean, when you've got a forward as good as that, and when you've got wingers as good as Michael Elise and Rabicieze, then it's, you know, it's a pretty easy job. Put the ball in the mixer and the big man will do the rest. Yes, uh, Alise has been fantastic, hasn't he, mate? 
out of the two, you know, Eze is obviously Mercurio. I think he's had a, a few sort of injury niggles here and there. Elise has been the player who's been sort of stealing the headlines recently, hasn't he, mate? Ten goals, five assists so far this season, occupying that right wing. He's going to be an absolute terror. Luca Dean is going to be absolutely shagged. You know, he's played so much football, too much football, I think it's fair to say. And with someone as techy as Elise, just not even just running down the wing, just having the ball at his feet and 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 has you know having Dean at his mercy, it it could be quite a long afternoon really for our defenders, couldn't it? It really could, mate. It really, really could. Um, they yeah, as I, as I rightly say, I, you have to respect what they're doing, how they've you know they've got nothing to play for this season, but they really are kind of putting their foot forward and continuing like what is a really strong end to the season under Oliver Glasner and I like that and I think you know almost as we've been on this podcast France have named their squad for Euro 2024 and I almost think that as someone like Jean-Philippe Mateta I know Michael and Lise can probably feel a little bit aggrieved that they're not in it for anyone curious Moussa Diaby has also not made the squad uh, he won't be there nor will Luca Dean and obviously Boudicard Kamara misses out through injury so, unfortunately, you've got the fact we've got three lads that could definitely have been in with a shout. There won't be any Villa boys representing Les Bleu at this tournament, nor likely Elise. So, it wouldn't surprise him, to be honest with you, if he's got a little bit of a point to prove, as does Jean Philippe Mateta. And so, yeah, it's um, it's going to be a very interesting game between two very good teams. Uh, you know, obviously, I think last season, was it last season? Um, at, at Palace, or the season before, there was that great goal from, from John McGinn on the edge of the area. And so we, we do have some great, good memories of South Park in recent years. It would be nice to end the season with a win. But I think, to be honest with you, it's all sewed up. I think the celebrations of the other night kind of tell you just how much, like, you know, if, if you offered Bill the chance to end the season now, I think we would do. And yeah, as you say, like, I don't think we'll take off, off the gas and, and, you know, let Crystal Palace stroll to a win by any means. Uh, you know, I, I think we, you know, we couldn't progress to Villa points if, you know, we did end up working out with, with you know, with the defeat. I think it's been a fantastic season. You know, whilst we'd love to end with a win, and I'm sure that is absolutely the priority for her and I. Uh, it's, um, it is, I mean, regardless, even, you know, had, had this, the, you know, the Spurs situation gone down to the last day, I'd be really nervous about this one, mate, even if it was yeah. all on the line, even if we had to give 100%. I, I still think this would be a really difficult game. Yeah, it would be, mate. It would be. I think that the main concern for Villa at the moment, aside from, crosses into the box and concede in that way which you know obviously great news when you're playing against Crystal Palace um, I'm being sarcastic for those who couldn't tell is the midfield with so lightweight and Adam Wharton has taken like a duck to water for you know transitioning from the championship to the Premier League really good I think shouts for Euro squad are premature but there is a serious player there and I believe there was some like top European clubs that were after him in January as well and in the summer didn't end up happening obviously Palace have unearthed an absolute gem you know again just goes to show you the value that there is in the championship um, if you're willing to sort of scout and and put your faith in young English players Uh, but you know I look at I look at him as someone who's really sort of galvanized help organize that midfield uh, he's got 80% pass accuracy boasts 84% accurate passes in his own half uh, he's recovering the ball five times per game, only dribbled past 1.4 times, uh, and he's making 1.3 interceptions per 90 as well. So all of these, you know, amazing statistics, all point towards them just really dominating the midfield, which again, you would expect from the home side and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is this is going to be a tough game, a really tough game, and... I'm actually quite looking forward to to watching him, if I'm being completely honest, mate. Because again, he's not someone I've seen too much of. But after hearing all of the hype and 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 seeing the numbers for myself, looks like this is a serious player in the making. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that it's a very Adam Watson has, has been fantastic, as you say. I think what a great pickup. I think him and Morgan Rogers are fantastic examples of just how quickly, given the right environments, players can step up from the championship. Um, and how just how ready and how much talent there is in that league that's just ready to go and take, go and take the league by storm, really. In this stadium, you know, not just those two boys has been great examples of it kind of throughout. But yeah, obviously, 
it will be interesting to see what this Palace team looks like next season. Can they keep hold of Eze and Elise? I think obviously they had the boost and that both of them, I think, signed new deals relatively recently. Obviously, Adam Ward's on the books as of January. So you'd imagine that they can, and if they do, that puts them in a very interesting position for next season. Uh, I think this league is starting to shape up to be a very, very strong one for next season. And I think Palace will be a team that are kind of expecting to compete to go to the year. I think they're starting to put the pieces together for a club that could probably be on the push for those latter Europe, like on, on the outskirts of those latter European spaces. I think if they can add, whole, you know, a couple of players around as a, a league, say, I mean, I've, I've just pulled up a, a stat here. But Michael and Lise, um, there's only two wingers who rank in the 95th plus percentile for both non penalty goals and successful dribbles. That's Michael Elise and Vinicius Jr. Like that, that's the, those are the kind of levels that we're talking about. If they can keep hold of those two guys and build around them, um, I think they're eight and they're going to be a very fun proposition and be probably a very good one as well for next season. Absolutely, mate. It's going to be tough. And Glasner is somebody who's got experience in Europe. So you would imagine that, as you say, that would be a target. Going to have to ask you for a score prediction, mate. I know we don't want to predict the Villa to lose, but I think yeah. I, I think all parties would be happy with a one-one draw in the season. Yeah, down. I think so, mate. I, I was going to say a draw as well. Um, I'll go two-two. I, I think there's going to be a fair few goals in this, but um, I, I do think that we will want to kind of end the season on a high and show kind of the league that you, you know we we deserve to be there. We're not just on the beat quite quite yet, and um, you know we all know that. In an ideal world, we would have had one more game to play at the end of the season in the conference league final. And then Unai's little message to us that Villa Power and which was earlier, he said that, you know, Villa, they were disappointed they didn't go further in that competition. And so I still think there will be a determination to end the season on the high and make sure that we, you know, finish up on a very good note to go into the summer. And it looks like, I mean, the transfer rumours are already coming in thick and fascinated that, yeah, as I say, you know, we've got the, the cup final at the end of the month. The Euro is not too long away. It's going to be a busy old summer. And the work has already started, it seems, for what we've been seeing from Munchie and Co. They're already at the table, scouting team are ready. So let's get ready. Going to be a busy summer, mate. It's going to be a busy summer. And for that, you guys, I'm going to want to make sure you subscribe to the channel with the bell notifications hit. That way you'll never miss a podcast from Dan and I. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, download, share with your friends, follow, all that. It helps out more than you guys could imagine. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe and up the villa.